Hey everyone, this is Ellie Mae with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and today I wanted to share how you can easily turn a design into stickers that you could then print and cut on your Silhouette machine. First, I wanna apologize for my voice. I am recovering from laryngitis, and I have lost my voice for almost two weeks. So it is a bit scratchy still, and I'm still recovering from that, but I needed to get this video out for a deadline. So I want to show you this design on the screen is one that I have created completely in Silhouette Studio. There is a link in the description below on my recent Silhouette class where I teach you how to create your own designs. We go through several different designs and this is one of them. So this design could be used for creating for Mint, Silhouette Mint stamp machine which I use that, but then I also understood that not everybody has a Silhouette Mint or that newer computers don't always connect to the Silhouette Mint. For instance, the Mac Ventura does not, it's not supported. So if you don't have a Mint stamp machine or can't use one, how would you use this design? For the class, I was creating different projects. I was showing how to create the designs. You could use them for many different projects. So not just this Mint Studio, um, stamp machine but you could use this design as a sticker as well so you could create all kinds of different designs I show you how to do that step by step in the class so if you're interested check out the link below in the description but I'm going to show you how I can turn this simple design I'll just move this around here you can see that it's just a simple design that we created with text and shapes and I'm going to turn that into a sheet of stickers very, very easily. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out on my page. <clears throat> now I am printing to letter size, so I'm going to set it up for that specific size. So I'm going to come over on the right hand side and I'm going to choose letter. Or you can, sometimes you can choose printer, um, but this depends on your software version sometimes your printer your page size you can see here if i select printer my page size is a little bit different than a letter size sheet so you want to make sure that whatever page size you are currently printing on that is the exact dimensions here that you are seeing because those registration marks that we're going to see here in just a second are very very specific on that page if your page does not match your registration marks or something does not match on your page, you could have a cut error or a registration marks error. So those registration marks, once we have our page set up, I also wanna turn on this show cut border and show print border. The print border is a gray line and it shows what your current printer with the current page size in your printer settings, what your printer margins are. Now, if we come up here to our registration marks panel, I'm going to turn my registration marks on. These, these marks are how the Silhouette machine reads where the design is. And there's a couple very key points here. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to click restore defaults and you probably won't see anything on my screen because I print with the defaults the majority of the time. The defaults for the page size for registration marks are where you are going to get your most accurate cut. While you can adjust things on the registration marks area, for instance, your length, your thickness, inset, and you also have advanced options here where you can change your insets. While you can adjust those, some users have success and some do not. So if you are ever having issues with print and cut, I would highly recommend that you do a test print with your restore defaults. The more you change those registration marks, the greater chance that you are increasing your chances of having an inaccurate cut or a registration error read. Even if the machine reads the registration marks or looks like it did, it may still not cut accurately. So you wanna be very careful. And if you have issues, I would recommend a test print with those defaults. It is the number one issue that we see with print and cut. Maxing out those registration marks does not always work. And 
even if it might work for three pages, if you printed five, three out of those five pages might print, and that fourth and fifth page, you have bad cuts. In the long run, you could end up going through more materials trying to get an accurate cut after moving out the marks than if you just printed on the default registration marks from the get-go. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, this is a circle design. I wanna make a one inch circle sticker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to my draw ellipse tool. I'm gonna to choose that and then I'm going to hold my shift key down. Oh, I need to select it. I'm gonna hold my shift key down and I'm gonna draw a perfect circle. Now at the time, I don't need to have it exact here because I can change that in my quick access toolbar. The lock is locked because I drew a perfect circle. So I'm just gonna change this to one and hit enter. And it's going to change both my width and my height at the same time proportionally because I have the aspect locked. Now I know what size I want to put my design in. So I can zoom in here. I'm going to use this little mouse zoom tool. And this is the size of a sticker that I'm going for. And one inch is probably a little small, so I'm actually going to make this 1.5 inches. And then it almost fits in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually shrink my design just by grabbing the bounding box on the corner so it fits a little bit better within that. And this is a complete personal preference. So once I have the size, I'm going to center. So I'm going to select both and choose my center align. And now I have my sticker. <clears throat> but here is where you want to make your changes. So I have one sticker on my page. I'm going to come up here to the Send tab in the top right. And it, this is just the last thing that I chose. So I'm actually going to set this up. I'm going to change this to Sticker Paper White. And then what you'll notice here is that everything is set to cut. I have all those bold red cut lines around my design. I don't want that. I only want it to cut the outer edge of my circle. So there's a couple ways you can do this and it is software dependent. So the first way you can do this is you can, with your design ungrouped, I can select my text inside the circle only and I can choose no cut. That is going to turn the cut lines off. Now, if I undo that, if I select both of them, so currently I have a circle that is not filled with color. If I choose cut edge, it should cut the outside edge of my circle. However, in some software versions, because it is an empty circle, the software does not see it as two objects stacked on top of each other. It sees it as one object inside of another object. So if this does not work, I'm gonna undo this here. I'm gonna come back out here to the design tab if that does not work, I'm going to click on the outer circle and I'm going to come up here to my fill color panel and I'm going to just choose white. Now, since I drew my circle after my design was on the screen, it's going to place it on top of my text. So I simply need to right click and choose send to back. Now the software in any version sees that it is two objects stacked on top of each other. So it's a white filled circle. And unless you have a very expensive white ink printer, you printers don't print white. So filling it with white does absolutely nothing. Our material is a white background, so it works. It doesn't print white, you aren't wasting any ink. Um, it's simply telling the software that you have a white object with your text on top of it. So now it sees it as two objects stacked together no matter what software version you are in. In older versions of the software, it would see that as an empty circle that your design was inside of instead of on top of. So I just wanted to explain, so there's actually three ways there that you're doing it. So then if I come over here to the Send tab and I zoom in here, with both of them selected and I choose cut edge, it's gonna cut that outside edge and it's going to do exactly what the second step I showed you did. So those are three ways 
Make sure you pause and rewind and go back if you need to on seeing how I did that. You wanna do this before you make your copies. It's much easier to do it on one than it is to do it for a whole page full of designs. So if your design is the same, then you can simply do the first one. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a copy. Now that I've turned the cut lines off on the text inside, I can, with both of them selected, I can choose group. Now it's going to function as one object. It is not one object, it's still two layers stacked on top of each other, but a group means that it will move as one object. So if I zoom out here to my page, now I can start and duplicate these. So what I'm gonna come over here and do, since I want the whole page filled, I can come over to my replicate panel. You do have this option here to fill page, but I tend to find that I prefer to do it myself and I can place them closer together or uh, just assemble it a little bit better to save or maximize paper. <clears throat> now, another thing about print and cut here is you want to keep out of the cross hatched area and you want your entire design, sometimes even your selection box, outside of the cross hatched area. And I will link a video in the description below on how print and cut works. And I have a zoomed in view of how it reads those registration marks. It needs space in order for that laser eye to find the black marks. If you have anything, especially dark colors within the cross hatched area of your print and cut, it can interfere with the optical eye getting an accurate read on your registration marks. It is not a high intelligence level of life form. It is just a laser eye looking for specific black marks in a very specific location. So these tips will get you the most successful print and cuts consistently. Other methods may work once, may work twice, but then you're in the middle of a job and you can't get it to work right and it won't register and it won't cut accurately. We always go back to the basics. Back to the basics, do a test. So now that I have that, I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna make some copies. And that looks like about what I can get uh, enough on the page. I can try for another one, but it's not really gonna fit. And I would rather have an accurate cut on one page and have to print two pages to get accurate cuts on both pages versus trying to squish everything together into one page. Now, another thing to note here is sometimes this area, I'm gonna pull down a guide here to show you. Sometimes this area between these two crosshatched marks makes a difference too especially if your design is a dark printed design because that optical eye, when it comes over here and reads this, if it picks up any of that color at all in this area, when it goes back to the start point, it could interfere with that accurate reading. So just some things to keep in mind. You can try it, you can test it, but if you do run into issues, try taking your design out of that crosshatched area. Now the crosshatched area does not print on your page. It is simply on your screen and that gives the optical eye the safety zone for it to read. So then I'm gonna, just gonna delete this guide. Okay, now I'm just gonna space these out. And I'm just gonna use, first I'm going to center those, and then I'm gonna space those out. And then once I have that, I can simply make copies. So I'm just gonna hold my Alt key down and drag a copy down. And then I can just fill the page because this is supposed to be a quick video. It's hard for me not to give you the tips to be successful with your silhouette, which can be take more time on the video because I want you to be successful. So I'm going to keep that design out of that cross hatched area. So I just moved it over just a little bit. So now what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that my line is not going to print I'm gonna come up here to file and print. It's always a good idea to save your file as well, but I'm going to go to print and see the preview. And I wanna make sure that that red circle is not going to print. As long as your line width is set to zero, it should not print. 
And what I mean by that is if I come here and I select my red circle, come over to the line width, line style panel, as long as my thickness is set to zero, it should not print. So let's go back and we'll do this quick print. So I'm gonna choose print. And then this is the print preview. I'm gonna choose print again. And you're gonna see this little window pop up. This is a Windows 11 thing. Um, it's stupid. It has to do with my Windows update is what we found out. Um, someday it'll get fixed, but I'm gonna choose cancel here. So if you do encounter that, it's just a, a darn Windows thing and you can work around it. Then I wanna make sure I have my current printer selected. And I wanna come here to preferences because when I print on specialty media to my printers, I want it to print from the rear tray. So I do like to check this little preview before printing because it has saved me from wasting materials and ink in the past. And then you can set your page size. I just keep it as normal usually, it depends on what I'm printing. And I'm gonna choose my paper source as my rear tray. Now, all printers are different. If you're printing on specialty media or cardstock, a rear tray is a very good thing to have on your printer because the rear tray prints, it pulls it from down from behind it and then it prints it straight through the printer and comes out the front or you know however your printer is set up. If you print from a tray, the tray is on the bottom, it has to make a U-turn in your printer to come out the front or wherever it comes out on your printer. That can have feed issues, especially with thicker media, sticker papers, glossy materials, so it can get either held up in there, the registration marks may not be printed in the um, correct location, that can affect your cuts as well. And when you print, you also wanna make sure that you're printing at, a, at the pay, exact page size. You do not want your page to be scaled. You do not want it to be shrunk. You want it to print exactly as it shows on the screen. So those are all issues that we see when somebody is printing and their cut is off or they get a registration error, is if it's not printing at 100% or printing exactly where it should be on the page, then you can have an error. So I'm going to choose rear tray, I'm going to choose OK, and I'm going to choose print. Since I selected that second print preview, it's going to pop up on my printer. So here is another where, place I can check, and I want to make sure that all of my registration marks are going to print. And I want to especially make sure that this bottom left registration mark is going to print. And I want to make sure that there's no red line that is printing as well because I only want to cut that I don't need it to print so then I'm going to switch over here once I hit start printing I'm going to switch over to my printer and we're going to watch how that works so then it printed through my rear tray and it's coming straight out of my printer and then depending on your materials you may want to have it dry um, some materials take longer for the ink to dry that is going to be up to you in testing. So then I'm going to take this page and I'm going to go back to my silhouette machine. Okay, now that I have my page printed, there's a couple things you want to just double check, especially if you have issues. Um, and I keep saying, especially if you have issues, it's not because everybody has issues, it's because I troubleshoot a lot. And so we troubleshoot issues. And the most common ones are the ones I'm mentioning with this print and cut. So I, I want to mention those in the video so you have success. So you wanna make sure that your registration marks have printed completely on your page. And they should match the exact location as it shows on your screen. So it should be the exact distance from the left, from the top, and at the bottom. If something looks off, that can indicate why you would have a cut issue. And then you want to make sure they're not blurry and that you have enough ink in your machine. So then I'm going to take my silhouette cutting mat. Now, if you haven't gathered by now, print and cut is very specific. A silhouette cutting mat is what it's designed for. Other third party mats are not the same distance at the margins of the cutting mat. So that can make a difference in your accuracy as well. The Silhouette machine is designed for the Silhouette cutting mat, especially for print and cut. 
and you want to line it up and have it set up exactly the same as you see in your Silhouette software for your best success. So you place it in the top left corner of your Silhouette cutting mat. You want it to be on the cutting mat exactly as it is on the screen. That means you want it to be on the grid, grid lines. You do not want your grid lines showing at the top or the bottom because that optical eye could pick that up as a black mark. Remember, it's not a high level of intelligence. It's just an optical eye looking for black. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm going to load my cutting mat. The left edge of the cutting mat goes on the line on the left and I'm going to press the load button and it's going to pull it in. Now again, third party cutting mats are not the same size. That means that the margin at the top of the cutting mat or the margin on the left side of the cutting mat could be different. That means that your machine is not going to know the exact location where those registration marks are or it's not pulling it into the machine the exact distance. The machine is calibrated for a silhouette cutting mat. So if you are using third party cutting mats, it may work a few times. It may work for you for a while. But if you end up with cut issues, that could be why, is because this is set up and calibrated specifically for silhouette cutting mats and to be exactly the same as your silhouette software screen. So when you go to send this, you're gonna I hold the mat level. If the mat is hanging down in front, as you can see here, if you watch closely up here, if I, even on my table surface, if I let go of my mat, the material bubbles up just a little bit. That can affect how that optical eye reads on the material because instead of reading straight on flat on a material, it's bubbled up and it's concave as it's reading that registration mark. So it can affect your print and cut results. So you wanna hold your mat completely level. I'm gonna switch back to the software. I need more hands to do these videos. Then I'm going to come up here to my send tab. Since I set that first one up, they should all be ready to go. And then you would set up your settings. So I'm just going to stick with these settings that are the presets. And they seem to work for my sticker paper, which is a Staples brand sticker paper. And I'll link that in the description below as well. So when you're ready, you can go ahead and click send. And we'll switch back. So then it's looking for those registration marks in a very specific location. And you, if you watch your machine closely, you can see a red optical eye and it's actually measuring those lines and seeing where they're at. And then I'm gonna speed up this video while it cuts. And my friend, my little helper is back there. She just jumped up as the machine was cutting. Make sure your mat doesn't hit anything behind your machine as well. Now, once it's done, I'm going to take my blue protective cover, lay it down, lay it down on my workspace, and I'm going to unload my cutting mat. Then I'm going to flip, going to flip my mat over, and I'm going to carefully peel my cutting mat away from my materials. And then I'm going to put my blue protective cover back on because my helper is sitting right behind me. And as, if I don't, she's going to put her feet all over it and have cat hair on it. And then I have my sticker sheets. If I can get zoomed in here and focused, all of my stickers cut perfectly. And here is the perfect sticker, perfect circles, equal distance around. Again, I rarely have, here, let me switch back over to my camera. Again, I rarely have any issues with print and cut. 
And the tips that I have put into this video are the ones that we see the most often when we are troubleshooting print and cut issues. Most print and cut issues can be fixed by adjusting something within the design or within the setup that the user is, ha is doing. So that is what we see the majority of the time with print and cut issues. If you are interested, I also have a full step-by-step -step print and cut class that is linked in the description below as well. It goes step-by-step -step into do working with different designs for print and cut. This was just one example of how you can take a sticker design and turn it into a print and cut project. If you have questions, please let me know below in the comments, and I hope you have a great day. Thank you.